Oh, wonderful. And you know, the top ladies and gentlemen, are, when we call for the talking circles, they are right there up front. We really, really do appreciate the support. Uh, Professor Clement Sankat uh, has sent his apologies. He was not able to, to make it, but as uh, so many gentlemen in high places do, he sent his right-hand woman. <laughs> so I'd like to introduce <laughs> Professor Rhoda Reddock, Deputy Campus Principal, and, and our own former head of the then Center for Gender and Development Studies. As Deputy Principal, she has special responsibility for students in addition to her other duties related to the management of the campus. She is a former lecturer in sociology and associate lecturer at the Women in Development Program at the Institute of Social Studies, The Hague. She has published widely, including Women, Labor, and Politics in Trinidad, a History, which was named the Choice Outstanding Academic Book for 1995, Plantation Women International Experiences, <coughs> which is a co-edited text, uh, Caribbean Sociology Introductory Readings, also co-edited this time with Christine Barrow, and an edited collection interrogating Caribbean masculinities with, with UWI Press. And most recently, she has published Sex, Power, and Taboo, Gender and HIV in the Caribbean and Beyond. Among her many awards are the UWI Vice Chancellor's Award for All Round Excellence in Teaching and Administration, Research, and Public Service, and the seventh CARICOM Triennial Award for Women in 2002. She's also a distinguished Fulbright New Century Scholar. She won this award in 2004, and she received in March 2012 an honorary doctorate from the University of the Western Cape in South Africa. She is also a holder of a national award. She received the Trinidad Tobago National Award Gold for her contribution to women's rights and issues. Thank God for right hand women. We'll be welcome. <laughs> Professor Redock. Thank you very much, Dr. Morgan. And I didn't pay her to do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dr. Paula Morgan, head of the Institute for Gender and Development Studies, Professor Patricia Mohammed, project leader of this very important project, would like balance and aging in Trinidad. I must mention Ms. Cheryl Ann Boudram, who unfortunately is unable to be here. And like Professor Mohammed, I wish her all the best in her recovery. Dr. Angelique Nixon, Project Research Design Coordinator. Ms. Renee Cozier, Project Research Assistant, and other members of the research team. <laughs> members of the IGDS staff. Uh, in Ms. Sheila Stewart, Social Affairs Officer, UN ECLAC, Ms. Mei-Ling Young Lau, Honorary Secretary Top, my other UWI colleagues, and I'm really happy to see so many of you here, especially invited guests, members of the media, representatives of the UN system, and I know I saw Dr. Lister Fletcher here uh, earlier, the <coughs> UN representative for FAO. Also, Ms. Stacey Richards-Kennedy, Deputy Res Rep UNDP. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. I bring greetings on behalf of campus principal, Professor Clement Sankat, and myself in my capacity as deputy principal, but also as professor of gender, social change, and development on the occasion of this launch. The issue of work-life balance and the relationship of aging is extremely important for us here in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as, as Ms. Stewart remarked, for our entire Caribbean region. And it's a topic that needs to be addressed. I therefore would like to congratulate and thank the Institute for Gender and Development Studies and the project leaders, Professor Mohammed and Ms. Cheryl Ann Boudram of the Social Work Unit, all the partners as well as the research team for engaging with this very important area. I'm really pleased with the collaboration with the external partners. That is something that we have traditionally done here, as well as the collaboration with other UWI departments. Because as an interdisciplinary unit, it's our responsibility here in gender to work with colleagues throughout the system to ensure that gender becomes part of the work that everyone does. 
although we may continue to do specialized work here <coughs> in this institute. As some of you may know, I have a special interest in the outcomes of this research project. As some time ago, along with Yvonne Bob Smith, I conducted a study entitled Reconciling Work with Family, Issues and Policies in Trinidad and Tobago, commissioned by the ILO, which was published in 2008. Now that study was part of the ILO's Conditions of Work and Employment Program, where they saw the implementation of ILO Resolution R165 on workers with family responsibilities. And that study, which we carried out for Trinidad and Tobago, was part of a range of studies carried out in Latin America. In addition to this, Trinidad and Tobago, I believe, was the only country in the Caribbean, which aimed to provide information on workers' experiences of negotiating work and family responsibilities and the implications for gender equality and poverty. So I am very pleased to see this as in a way a continuation of that earlier study which we carried out here some time ago. Now at that time, a few of our findings were as possible, as, sorry, as follows. We found that employers in both the private and public sector had not significantly accepted their responsibility to address issues and challenges of work family conflict. Most importantly, we found that the unpredictability of this country's infrastructure, especially transportation, traffic, utilities, for example, water, etc., played a large role in heightening work family conflict, as well as the assumption of this society based on housewife ideology that every child has a mother at home who is available in case the school closes down because there's no water or because there's an earthquake, that there's somebody waiting at home to accept this child. We also found, and this was a most important finding, that work hours and school hours did not correlate and that one family could have children with different hours of school opening and closing. And there were many challenges presented by this, which parents were somehow to automatically address. The heightening of citizens' fear of criminal violence had also placed more stress on working parents, who now often in the middle class, you know, travel up and down, dropping here, dropping there, to seek to ensure their children's safety, while poor and working class parents did not have such facilities. We also found that while middle and upper income parents, including women, were able to use their financial resources to ameliorate, ameliorate their situation with child sitters, babysitters, special transport arrangements, etc. As I mentioned, low income women were unable to access these support structures. Female parents in particular experienced in that mother's guilt or even wife guilt made valiant attempts to combine their need for career fulfillment and economic autonomy, but few support systems exist for them. And they sought to use innovative coping strategies to reduce conflict. What I found interesting was that in our study, we found that parents today did not feel empowered to ask children to assist them in housework. And that is very interesting because um, that, that, yes. We found that trade unions had not addressed the issue. They admitted freely, although AFET, the Association of Female Executives of Trinidad and Tobago, had tried to do so through one, their focus on childcare solutions, and two, their award for the top five family-friendly companies, which I believe they do every five years. As you saw already, we also found that in the absence of parents, grandparents and other relatives accepted these responsibilities, but were often unable to cope. Aging was therefore an issue as the elderly were both caregivers and being cared for. And the majority of elderly, of course, 
women. We found the state sector had indirectly addressed some aspects with initiatives such as early childhood education services and the school nutrition program, yet citizens still strongly rely on personal strategies to cope. Now, we provided a long list of recommendations, some of the same ones here, but many others. Unfortunately, most, if not all of which, have not been implemented or even considered, although some trade unions did commit to doing more in this regard in their collective bargaining processes. Here at the UWI St. Augustine campus, and I'm happy to see our director of HR here, we have tried in our small way with the establishment of an after-school care center, although there has been also a demand for a daycare center for children three months to three years. But we still have a very long way to go. And hopefully the UWI gender policy in which the IGDS and the Human Resources Department are fully engaged can take us further along this path. I am therefore pleased sisters and brothers, ladies and gentlemen, that the main aim of this study is to sensitize the study populations to options for support, coping strategies, and social work interventions aimed at reducing work-life balance stresses. There are many challenges faced by parents, especially poor single parents, grandparents, and caregivers. And as a country, we must take this seriously and provide the support systems that are required. And this evidence-based data will certainly inform us. It will be fascinating to see what has happened in Trinidad and Tobago since this earlier study, so that we can evaluate whether, has there, whether there has been improvement, stagnation, or regression. I'm therefore really impressed with the innovative research design that was presented and the innovative strategies that are being implemented. So in closing, once again, I give my thanks and congratulations to the committed members of the research team and the IGDS in general. I hope to see more cross-departmental collaborations like this one, as well as collaborations that involve our partners. And I'd like this to continue and flourish. It is now my pleasure and honor on behalf of the University of the West Indies, on behalf of our campus principal, and on my own behalf to officially launch the research project Work-Life Balance and Aging in Trinidad, studying the productivity and well-being of working women and men. I wish you every success. Thank you.